a very good evening to each one of you. On behalf of Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce, we welcome you all for an exclusive session wherein Mr. Krishnan Ramabhadran, who is the founder and CEO of Zentron Labs, will be sharing his success story of a startup in agri-tech sector. On behalf of Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce, we express our sincere thanks to Mr. Krishnan Ramabhadran for accepting our invitation to address Thank our you. members. Thank you very much, sir. This session is organized under the aegis of Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee of the Chamber. For the kind information of our members, this committee is chaired by Mr. Ankur Bhaumik, who is the CEO of MTR Foods, co-chaired by Mr. Narsimha Nakshatri, who is the Agro and Horti Consultant, and Mr. Prakash, who is the Technical Di uh, Director at Center for Holistic Agriculture and Green Enterprises. We also express our sincere thanks to Mr. Jagdish Sunkat, who is the member of the committee, as well as the director of Kanakadhara Agricultural Innovations for facilitating this session. I would now request Mr. Jagdish Sunkat to take over from here, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, today's day is special for me because I sit on both sides of the chair. Okay, as a part of BCIC and uh, the Agri Food Processing Committee, uh, you know, I have really seen how the industry people get together to start su uh, supporting startups. And on this side of the table with Zentron Labs, have enjoyed being a part of a team which has been creating some wonderful, unique engineering. Uh, like I was saying in the context where as a national agenda we have for starting, supporting startups, etc. January 16th is celebrated as a startup day in the country. And Zentron Labs has been one of the winners. Uh, there were about 4,000 startups, about um, 400 startups in the agri space, and Zentron was one of the winners. Okay, I've known Krishnan personally very well, so it makes me makes my job today difficult. Uh, but still, because I know him well, I would like to take the lead in kind of uh, uh, tweaking some words from him to uh, just showcase it for. I mean, I'm really thankful for the huge number of people who have come in here for the startup. Okay, we have a lot of young star youngsters here, Krishnan. Aspiring startups, I would like to call, and hence I'd like to pick on uh, your brains uh, with a few questions. Welcome Having won the award, what are you left with? Having won the award, what are your feelings? I mean, uh, definitely feels great, you know, because I think there were about 2,700 participants, and uh, in our segment, there were about 180 participants, and winning an award, that two national award from the um, nation's government and uh, that is something very 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 special for us and uh, feels all of us you know the entire team at Zentron makes us feel makes us all feel very proud and happy about it definitely you know it also gives a feeling of responsibility right uh, because you know we are now known for kind of uh, make in India or innovating from India and uh, it is very very important that we behave responsibly and take this forward and you know make it make the technology reach more and uh, be of use. So fundamentally feeling very happy. Thank you. Krishnan, this is your second innings as an entrepreneur. Second time round, I would say. I mean, most people would like to make money and retire. You said, I'll go back to the desk and work again. Tell us something about your entrepreneurial journey, please. So fundamentally, I consider myself an, as an engineer who passionately tries to keep on adding value and creating things of value. And uh, I think, you know, somewhere, uh, this is a personal question, so I, I, I will get into something a little bit personal. I, I, I've always believed in uh, creating value for the society around and uh, as well as the nation at large, you know. Uh, the larger picture is, you know, today we are importing a whole lot of capital equipment into the country and a lot of foreign exchange and dependence on foreign imports are there for complex equipment. You know, this feeling that it's the same engineers that go and sit in other countries and uh, develop great technology. So it should eminently be possible for the same engineers to create a, a create similar products here, if not even better products and be able to ship those to the world. 
you know, it is that confidence that has led me to this fundamentally, you know, and that desire to do things, do things from India that has led me to, the, to this. So specifically talking about my previous venture, yes, you know, it was, uh, we got into some deep uh, design work in the semiconductor uh, space, VLSI space and all of that. And yes, you know, we, we came to be um, number two or number three in the world in that particular space and certainly something to feel happy about, right? But fundamentally for myself, uh, you know, this, this being able to do things from India and for the Indian market and to be able to export worldwide, you know, complete full products is what has motivated me. So I really couldn't stop there, you know. I really couldn't stop because, you know, I want to use up whatever I have to to overall, you know, uh, to, to create successes in others and as well as, you know, uh, success for the society as well as for the nation. I truly believe this and that is why, you know, the second time I'm doing this and I'm very happy doing this and I'm very passionate doing this also. And I see the enthusiasm over here and uh, I think this enthusiasm is going to take us forward a lot. So that is really the reason, Jack. How did this moving from silicon to carbon happen? You were a silicon engineer. You now come to work with farmers. So, uh, um, rather than getting into the technical aspect of it, uh, I, I'll probably narrate the sequence of incidents that happened. Right? We were incorporated as a company wanting to do innovation in the vision space. You know, vision was hot, is hot. Vision and AI and machine learning is hot. So we all wanted to be in this space. Number one. Number two is uh, we were building at that point in time. We were building a multidisciplinary organization. You know, we were serving customers with special purpose equipment using vision for quality inspection and all of that and building the team also with that. So we wanted to build a multidisciplinary team over there. Third, that happened is a, a serendipity that happened, or you can say that we utilized the opportunity. What happened was an, um, an European client wanted, wanted us to develop some algorithms for uh, uh, relating to fruit grading, you know, specifically apple grading. And we accepted that and uh, we worked on that for a couple of years and developed some good algorithms and developed a library of algorithms to them. During this process, we kind of investigated, you know, can we deploy our team, you know, which is multidisciplinary in nature and focuses on vision. And why don't we look at solving the same problem for our own country? And uh, we discovered that uh, number one, post harvest uh, is an underserved market. There's a lot to do. Number two is we came to understand from from experts in the industry that you know the we are past the green revolution and the white revolution. Now the horticulture revolution needs to happen and is yet to happen. So that we figured out that the time was right and we had the right team and the right technology to get into it. And we found that the market was also able to accept it. And that is really what led us into this actually, Jagdish. Thanks, Krishnan. Among the entrepreneurs, I really see and hear this often about understanding your market and knowing the next wave. Okay, thanks for letting us know that. I just want to get a little more, since I enjoy the freedom with you, a little personal about your thought process. Okay, founders and startups need to be product centric versus they need to be investor or funding centric. What has it been for you? What do you think? What are your thoughts about the same? Interesting question. I don't know whether it's a trap question, but nevertheless, I will share my thoughts on this. So whether investor centric or product centric, right? I would personally say we'll have to be value addition centric. If you are interested in adding value, both as an individual as well as an organization or a company, and you make sure that the value that you add is actually very, very useful to people right? and uh, for the society at large, right? Then you're going to be able to define the right product and uh, the investors are going to be around to help you doing that. So, but if you put the, uh, like they say, the horse before the cart, right? And uh, talk about money first and then the product and then the value addition. I don't think, uh, I personally believe that that's, that's a very difficult thing to build. You know, you're starting at the wrong point and coming in the reverse direction. So I would say probably start, start with value addition Given your current context, given your talents, given the strengths and weaknesses, opp opportunities and threats, what, what is it that you can add value, hence conceptualize a product and subsequently, you know, 
go to investors if if need be that is what i would say good that's a wise thing because we see many youngsters saying i have an idea i can raise money so let me do a startup you know anyway uh, this would not be the occasion to uh, drag the subject but one more thing that people who have worked in startups experience as a startup founder do you need to be a leader or a manager yeah so so there was uh, there was this piece that i had uh, read a few years ago about uh, entrepreneurs and uh, startup founders okay the major thing that uh, a startup founder needs to grapple with is dealing with opposites you on one hand have to be very passionate about what you've committed to and what the team is committed to and go after it relentlessly while doing that it is also important to have an opposite view and ask yourself what if not what about the other thing what about the opposite and this tussle is a constant tussle that you have to go on with yourself right so given that you need to focus on two opposites at any given point in time right uh, i would say that falls into the category of being a being a leader because if you are a manager you are bothered about executing one particular idea and in a particular manner with less number of variables but here you are starting out with two opposite variables so that naturally leads to kind of you know more being a leader than a manager certainly certainly you know the the leadership is expected from a founder from an entrepreneur leadership and a lot of agility is expected there with a good amount of managerial skills thank you that was very nice to say that uh, you know it really begins with taking only the leader takes a risk you know the manager is to de risk um similarly if i were to extend the question into making money for your company and making money for your investors versus creating value for your customers what should be an startup founders focus making making money for your investors making money for the company making money for what is the third please making money uh, creating value for your customers for the customers right so i i would probably start with your purpose why did you start a company in the first place you know i think the motivation of the founders play an important role into it and we'll have to base it on that because if we don't base it on that and if we base it on somebody else's motivation it is going to be very hard for the founders to carry on so one's own motivation is a very important part to figure out in this whole journey so i may not have a very generic answer but i will tell you what it is for me right so here the motivation has been to be to being as useful as possible and being totally focused on how one can be as useful as possible and in my case um thankful that i was educated as an engineer and i like being an engineer so i wanted to play to my strengths so really being playing to my strengths in this particular field of engineering and creativity in that field and from there taking and finding out how we can relentlessly add value is what i would say is has been my purpose and probably that's what you start with from there comes the customer purpose of a customer when you have the inner motivation figured out then you can be patient enough and persevering enough to make sure that you are adding value to customers because you know every, it is it is common knowledge and it is very true that unless you are able to add value to customers then you don't exist then when that happens then automatically the company and the investor falls in place i think i i'm now getting where you are coming from in your question right i think if we get this the opposite way i personally my feeling is it's a very dangerous thing uh, you are risking the investor you are risking a, risking a long term relationship with the customer that has trusted you and uh, you are probably also risking your own uh, your own professional life and if i may say probably your own peace of mind also so i think it really starts starts with what you want to do what your motivations are you have to have a very very clear uh, clarity on your own motivation as a professional as an individual start there on that firm foundation then figure out how are you going to add value and add value to your customer then automatically the company and the investor 
would become happy. Thanks, Krishan. Just let me plug in a sentence of appreciation or acknowledgement as information to many of the young startups. Uh, Krishan, you studied, you did your basic graduation and post graduation at IIT Chennai. You could have gone to the US, you could have been happily away there. You have chosen to be in India and solve Indian problems. Uh, I really acknowledge you for that uh, on behalf of BCIC and all this work. Um, any words to young students today who really are taken off by the story of I am a college dropout wanting to do a startup versus many people who want to complete their education, get an employment and then do a startup. And many people immediately after college, because they are not under the pressure of needing a job, wanting to do a startup. What should they be thinking of about education and startups? The in India has always been a nation of entrepreneurs. Okay, So that is not new to us. But in now there is a lot of attention on startups and rightly so, because we need a lot of entrepreneurship out here. There is a lot of potential to change things, to revolutionize the way things are happening for good and making a better place. And there surely startups are going to make a play a big role. So in this context, coming to your question, you know, uh, my personal view that if we step into uh, uh, being a starting up for the glory of it, right, uh, that would be a very dangerous thing to do because you are not starting off on a firm wicket. So I, I think it is uh, really important to find out why you are wanting to start up. Is it for the glory? Is it for the money? Or is it for some other meaningful that contributions that you find more much more meaningful than glory and money? So I think this is very, very important to figure out. This is the basis of it. So if if there is a bigger contribution that you want to make, right? Then you'll have to use the business principles to make sure that how you are going to survive, how you are going to grow, and uh, how you are going to play a role in society in the process of give and take, and be successful with it, so that you can add con uh, uh, continue to add value. In this context, I want to say this. Uh, I had read this a few years back, actually, right? So there are businesses that uh, run because. Um, it's like this, right? Uh, I want to make a product because I want to make money. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at it. The other way of looking at it is, I want to make money because I want to make more products. That really gives the motivation here, right? The second one is what you know. Um, uh, personally, that I would probably advocate or believe in rather, right? Because money and glory is going to follow you if your motivations are very clear right so in this particular case your motivation is the product and the value addition that you want to do with it and the change that you want to do with it and if you are attached to this the rest is going to follow and now the reason for making money is so that you can do more more so that you can do more value addition so that you can do more products so it's basically like i want to do more product uh, i want I, I want to make money because i want to do more products so that is really the end goal of it. You know, the value addition and playing a meaningful role is really the really the purpose of it. Looking at it the other way around, right? If you get into entrepreneurship because of glory, uh, that that is going to be very very short lived, and that's a very dangerous thing. You're risking your professional career also with it. It's my personal opinion. The opinions there could be other opinions also, but this has been my experience here. Uh, if money is the goal right uh, uh, rightly so there are many ways to make money so you need to choose the most optimal way to make money here a startup may not be the best way to make money uh, a startup is there something to revolutionize in a scalable model something that is presently happening and do it in an entirely different way that is what a startup is meant to do so if it is glory or a slippery wicket if it's money there are many ways to do it if you're on startup the motivation comes into picture that's what I would say. Uh, Krishan, we are not opening the session for uh, question answers, but still I received in the chat box. Please do share us three lines about the product that got you the award. Um, so it is in the post harvest uh, space. Uh, you can broadly say that it is in the vision robotics uh, area. It, this is to um, 
grade uh, fruits at very high speed. Our uh, machines are capable of uh, grading fruits into multiple different categories, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, R, and so on, uh, based on their quality levels. And uh, these equipments are capable of doing it at the rate of, say, five tons an hour, or uh, a larger machine can do it at the rate of 10 tons an hour. And uh, these machines are lane based, and at each lane, our machines can grade at the rate of uh, 10 fruits a second. We were the first to launch such a such an equipment from in the Indian market, uh, made out of India, designed out of India, completely out of India. So these uh, grades are determined uh, based on vision by using cameras and sensors and by using vision and uh, uh, AI techniques. That is what as a value as a value to the the customer. What is the value the farmers are experiencing? So what uh, what really this does is it grades the farmers produce into multiple grade levels so that the grower now can charge his produce based on the quality. Uh, typically what would happen if this is not uh, graded, if the produce is not graded is the entire lot gets valued at an average price. And that may not be very appropriate price and there is no guideline or rule to set this price level. It is uh, it could be whimsical or it could be because of other levers that the trade has got at that point in time. This brings, um, so to speak, a transparency. But more than transparency, what this brings is that the farmer or the grower is incentivized to produce better quality because he knows that an A quality is going to fetch more price than B quality. So this would be an intervention into the market to incentivize the growers to produce better quality. It would also in incentivize the trader or the buyer or the end consumer to pay for it because they know that they are going to get consistent quality for the price that has been that is being paid or for the price that is being negotiated. So it brings this clarity, consistency, and an incentive to the grower and for the whole value chain. That is really what this uh, machine of ours brings. And how many years of R&D did you put behind creating this solution? Um, we've been working at it for the last four years uh, on, on this particular machine. As I said, you know, we were pre previously working on the software side of this machine for uh, an year and a half prior to this. Okay. Uh, Krishan, not so much taking time on the products, etc. Uh, if I were to ask you three things about yourself that you would like to be known as a human being, forget about entrepreneur. I've asked you a lot. As a human being, let us see you in your words. It's difficult to characterize oneself, right? Uh, what I think I am might be totally different from what the world thinks I am, but nevertheless, uh, <clears throat> I would say that I tend to go from first principles on everything when it comes to technology, business or taking ethical decisions or, or every walk of my life. Uh, I try to go from the first principles. That is uh, that is something that I've been uh, pursuing. Uh, the second thing I would say is uh, thankfully there is a clarity in my purpose and I have stuck to it. Uh, the clarity of purpose is what what I would say, you know, makes my life easy and less stressful. I don't tend to go after uh, glitter that is out there and uh, that keeps me very peaceful. Uh, the third aspect is the, the perseverance or the patience part. I think uh, good or bad and mostly mostly 99% for good. I tend to be patient and uh, persevering and uh, for our startup, for our company, it has, uh, I think it has worked out very well. Patience at the right level, patience where it needs to be is what I would say. There's one more technical question, Krishnan. There is the talk of the electronic nose, olfactory factors. Can we be integrating such a uh, sensory uh, electronics into your machines and uh, say, just give us the most aromatic fruit. Um, 
technical question. So uh, technical answer would be that uh, uh, these olfactory sensors uh, take time for detection for it to be accurate. So our grading machines being inline grading machines, they do uh, they do the grading at very high speeds at 10 fruits a second. So from that point of view, it will be difficult to integrate into this type of a grading machine. But certainly there could be different types of grading machines which are like, you know, sample grading where an olfactory or an electronic nose can be pretty useful. And I would consider evaluating that for that purpose. Hello. Yeah. Um, ah, then, yeah, yeah. Another question. Are you a businessman or are you an engineer? I think it comes back to the one of the previous uh, um, questions that uh, we were posing. Um, I would I would say I'm an engineer at heart and uh, that leads to good business. Good. That's carefully crafted and uh, appropriate uh, that I can see. It. Um, Mm. Now, for most startups, you know, this. I'm sorry, I'll come back to this because I meet a number of young startups who are about this game valuation. Okay, what are your thoughts on this? Because everybody says the value of my startup is so many billion dollars, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, sadly enough, a lot of people also speak the language of dollars rather than rupees, as if we didn't value our currency. Okay. Uh, where does a uh, founder begin? Does he begin with valuation? Does he begin with a product? Or is it anywhere else? As I said, really, you know, when it comes to the founder or the company startup itself, right, I think it comes with value addition. And what is the addition in value that you are planning to do? Uh, you know, then, then, uh, then comes the product and the business model and all that. And eventually, I think the valuation is a follow on. Valuation might be a useful tool for certain things, you know, and we cannot neglect that per se, right? It's a useful tool for investment, certainly, right? We cannot uh, certainly neglect that, but it would be crazy, in my opinion, to start with valuation per se. Um, I think that is, in my opinion, you know, going down the slippery path for certain kind of uh, mindsets. Uh, at the same time, you know, uh, today I think there is a lot of scope for reaching. Uh, uh, more number of people, touching more number of people or touching more number of transactions, right? And technology is allowing us to do that. And that scale, you know, where one can easily bring scale with tech is what is leading to big valuations. And per se, I don't think there is anything wrong with that. And uh, that's perfectly fine. And that's how the economies are moving towards, right? But I see, I see what the question that you are asking, I am able to understand the question that you are asking. Um, the fundamental thing here, in my opinion, would be, you know, you take the investment that comes in and what portion of the investment goes into value addition or value creation and what portion goes into garnering of value. You know, if, if a significant portion is going into value addition and value creation, you know, fundamental value addition, then you have changed things for the better. And most of the money is being used for that purpose. And more the money that you are addressing for that particular purpose, the better it is going to get and better are the solutions with that. But however, if a significant chunk of the investment goes to value garnering, you know, the value addition suffers and it's only the value garnering and uh, the transactions move from happening from one end to the other. You're just garnering value from one end to the other. You're just pulling pulling the transaction to one side versus being the other value. So I think I think there probably needs to be a balance. There needs to be a certain amount of value garnering that is required for you to be successful so that you can do the value addition. But if value garnering is the sole purpose or the most purpose where 75 or 80 percent of the money that comes in is going into it and the value addition takes a back seat. Uh, then fundamentally the question is what is your purpose as an enterprise and what is the role that you play play in society 
right? So the valuations may come with this, but the purpose question still remains in my mind. Thanks, Krishnan. We are just approaching towards the end of the time available to us today. Really thankful for so many people who have chosen to participate here. Now, this is a little thought process that we at BCIC have been going through. Okay, we're at Bangalore Chamber of Industries and Commerce, where we are looking at organizations like Zentron, where you're basically engineers but solving problems of farmers. Now, what could we be doing to encourage more such efforts? such that uh, you know the burden of doing it is not just carried by the government but also by and not just by agri graduates and uh, farmers themselves uh, what can bcic be doing for startups so i think this is a deeper question but uh, let me try to answer it uh, in a in a few words uh, as to what bcic bcic could be doing in terms of Encouraging uh, startups, really, right? I think one would be identifying problems to be solved. What we see generally is startups struggling to find out what is the right problem to be solved. And the root of that is something that we discussed a while back in, in some of the questions that you had asked. And uh, I think that is something that needs to be addressed fundamentally. So I, I feel that, you know, any mentoring or any intervention that can come in the form of helping startups would start from posing the problems where a solution is required. And then and then probably, you know, uh, the usual incubation stuff can can happen uh, trying to address those problems. I think in a in a chamber of commerce, right? Uh, I think uh, surely there are very experienced and eminent people who would have faced a ton of problems or challenges in their lives, whom they see that uh, hasn't been cracked or yet, yet to be solved opportunities. I think if, uh, if the think tanks can come forward and share some of those opportunities, then I think there could be groups, individual groups or talented engineers or, pro or biologists or problem solvers who can come and pick those problems and then go into the usual incubation stream. I think this is where a chamber of commerce can potentially make a big difference. Thank you so much, Christian. I would just like to have a few concluding remarks from Ankur sir and Nakshatri sir. Okay, we have yeah, almost Mr. come to close. Ankur, please. I'm having some. Yeah, please. I think he has a problem. Maybe okay. you could. Okay. I think uh, I'm really, really, really grateful to Mr. Kristen Ramabhadran being a National Startup Awards winner of 2021. And especially after hearing from you, I think that lots and lots of start companies, they have to what they are looking for and also what BCAC has to do. I think this you have made it very clear to us, all of us. And we are also working with uh, Mr. Jagdish and all the committee, BCAC, ex Agro and Expert Committee, to identify the the, the some of these uh, startup companies and their problem issues and how can we handle them in this process we just started. I think it's the beginning. I think you have you have really helped our way and helped our BCAC Agro and Food Process Committee's aim or goal of taking this forward you have shown our way i really thank you so much if mr ankur is not able to assess ankur okay so thanks a lot uh, mr krishnan uh, sure, and sir. Uh, i really salute uh, to you and your uh, uh, what is that the the national award winning company zentron and uh, mr jagdi sunkats for conducting this session in any way thank you so much to you personally and also being an agro expert committee member and as well as uh, the supporting hat to you. Thank and you, secondly, sir. yeah. Secondly, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Ankur, our chairman uh, of Agro Food Processing Committee, and Mr. Prakash Rao, the co-chairman, and all the agro expert committee members. As you said, the as the Jagdish and as Mr. Krishnan said, all the committee members today they were there, all different fields. Uh, they are the engineers, they are agro, they are horticulture, they are the processors, everybody they were there today. I thank you so much for everybody. Thanks to all the participants. I think 
mostly more than 100 people they have participated today thank you so much for all the participants taking their time and and hearing us and thanks to the bcic secretariat rupa and all others for having this program thank you so much thanks a lot and we'll close this session sir thank you and we will send the special moment to you to your address sir thank you thank you jagdish thank you krishnan ji thank you so much bye bye see you thank you sir thank, thank you everyone for the opportunity thank you. thank you all participants thank you vcic team thank you